Hi, everybody. Well, welcome to a new year in making music. It's uh, Right now it's Tuesday, January 5th. You'll probably be watching this on Wednesday or Thursday, the 6th or 7th of January. I hope you had a good break, um, and I hope you're back ready to learn some more. Um, the kids that have been playing have been doing a great job. Um, we haven't heard from some students, and I hope they'll uh, come back to uh, class and start joining us soon. But you, those of you that have been playing have been doing great. <coughs> okay. In uh, less than two weeks, we will be taking Monday off. I think it's the 18th of January due to um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Um, and then also in February, it's traditionally sort of celebrated or acknowledged as African American History Day. So, uh, or not day, but month, African American History Month. I really think that every month is African American History Month because um, African Americans are part of all of the history of America. It's not like they are separate histories. And the same is true of Asian American history, okay? It's not like we should have just a couple of days or a week or something to talk about Hmong history. Um, Hmong uh, folks have been involved in the United States for many, many, many years, and we should always be talking about that and recognizing it. And the same is true for um, like Hispanic, you know, Hispanics were, were in many parts of the United States long before white people were. I mean, long before white people were. So it's not like it should be just one month. But we are going to do some extra things um, about African American music and African American history and so forth during both January for Dr. Martin Luther King and February for um, African American History Month. Okay, one of the songs that we're going to learn to play is called We Shall Overcome. And it was sung many, many times by um, folks that were marching for better rights, for better treatment, for civil rights. And these were both black folks and white folks. Yeah, it was mostly black folks. But there were a lot of white folks that joined them too, and Hispanic and Asian, lots of people, Native Americans that thought, you know, this is wrong for there to be segregation, for people of color to be told, oh, you have to sit in the back of the bus, you can't sit in the front, you can't live there, you can't work here because of your color. A lot of people thought that was wrong. And of course, Dr. Martin Luther King was the one that was the most famous to talk about it, uh, you know, in TV and at his I Have a Dream speech at the Washington Monument or the Lincoln Monument, I guess, really, and so on. So I'm going to show you now how to play. Here's this, uh, this uh, guitar player we're used to doing uh, jingle bells and so forth with. He's doing We Shall Overcome, and he's doing it nice and slowly. I'm going to go forward just a little bit. What you're going to do this week, um, the week of January 6th and 7th, you're going to record yourself just saying the chords right along with me, right along with this recording. You'll just say G when I say G. You'll say C when I say C. And then you practice playing your instrument that way. And then the next week, you'll record yourself playing it. Okay? So let me go forward just a tiny bit here. All right. As you can see up here, he's got G and C in parentheses. The same is true of this G and C. But then this G is not in parentheses. This G is not in parentheses. What he is doing there is he's telling you that this G and this C are half notes. Half notes get two counts each. When he just has a plain G, or like here a plain C or a plain E minor, he's telling you that's a whole note, whole measure, four beats. So the way it works is he's going to go G, C. See, each one of those only lasted two counts. Then he's going to go G, two, three, four. Same pattern. G, C, G, two, three, four. G, D, E minor, A, A, A sorry. D, A, D, two, three, four. Now, you can see in that second line, there's a whole lot of chords right in a row that only get two counts. So two things are going to be necessary. Number one, you're going to have to practice it quite a bit. Okay, this is not nearly as easy as Jingle Bells and the other, what was the other Christmas song? I can't even remember what it was. But whatever it was, it was very, very simple. This is much harder. The other thing you can do, of course, is to slow the video down. I'm going to remind you how to do that. Here we go. Set playback speed. Go to 0.75 up here. Don't go down here. You know, it's, it's strange that to turn the speed slower, you actually go up on that scale. But yeah, what you'll want is 0.75. I'm going to record it at the normal speed so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. When you practice it and record it, if you can go the normal speed, fine. But if you're having trouble keeping up, go down to 0.75. All right, I'm going to back him up a little bit, and I'll say him right with him. He does many verses. I'm just going to do one verse. 
No doubt Dr. Martin Luther King learned this song as a small child. It was sung everywhere in the African-American community and in some white and other communities as well and in church and so on and of course as an adult every time people were marching or protesting they would sing songs like this for at least two reasons. One is that um, a lot of bad things were being threatened of folks that were um, protesting. We're going to jail you. We're going to arrest you. We're going to have the police dogs bite you. We're going to fire on you with these fire hoses, water cannons. And then there'd be racists screaming out, we're going to kill you. We're going to stab you. We're going to beat you up. So they, all those folks that were protesting had to have courage. They had to be very brave. So one of the ways that they would make themselves more brave, more courageous, and encourage each other as they would sing together, okay? The other reason they would sing a lot of songs like this is some of those marches were long. I mean, in the march from uh, to the Edmund Pettus Bridge, I think they marched like 30 miles or something, you know, and it's hot. It was hot, and their shoes were uncomfortable, their feet hurt, they were tired, they were thirsty. So even when they weren't being threatened, you know, a lot of time they were just out in the countryside, there's nobody around but they would sing to help pass the time and, and not make themselves feel so miserable. It would take their minds off of, uh, you know, how difficult this was. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna record it and then you record it the same way. G, C, G. Two, three, four. G, C, G. Two, three, four. G, D, E minor, A, D, A, D, two, three, B lap B, G, D, G, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four, G, C, G, D, uh, G, two, three, four, G, two, three, four. Now, like I said, he will do several more verses, and you can if you want to, but all you have to record is that first verse. All right? Get to work on that. I hope you do well, and I look forward to seeing your recording, or you can play it for me live in class on Thursday. Okay? We'll learn about it Wednesday, and then you can come back to class Thursday and play it for me.